Today we're making a cutting board especially designed for one of our favorite Maker Ranch meals, tri-tip. We were sick of all the juice collecting around a perimeter channel of our old cutting boards, so we made a few new ones that collect the juice. We don't have any hardwood stores here in Joshua Tree, so I just ordered some maple online from Forest to Home. I'm going to glue the boards together butcher block style, and each board is an inch thick, so I just laid them out until I had established the width for the cutting board. I'm going to start the shaping process by drawing a couple of angled lines on one of these boards. I then use my jigsaw to cut along the lines. The jigsaw didn't have full support and maple's quite hard, so the cuts were a little bit jagged, but I just cleaned those up with an orbital sander and 100 grit paper. This first board is now the template that I'll use to shape all the other ones. I clamp the pieces together and then use my palm router with a flush trim bit to cut the second board so that it would match the first one identically. I repeated this process for all the other boards and was ready to start the first stage of the glue up. I'm using Type Bond Type 3 wood glue. And for this first stage, I'm just gluing up the boards that I shaped. I'm using a couple of extra boards on the outside, but I'm not putting glue on those because those are just to protect the boards from the clamps. As I squeezed the boards together with the clamps, they started to slide a little bit. That's typical, maple can be a bit slippery. So I just put a couple of coal boards and used another clamp to align the ends. I let the glue cure for about three or four hours and then loosened the clamps and was ready to do some sanding. I went a little heavy on the glue because I wanted to make sure the boards were sealed all the way up to the edges. And so there's a little bit of squeeze out that I just scraped away with a chisel. I started the sanding with my Ryobi belt sander using a 60 grit belt. This is a really aggressive sanding technique and I was able to smooth out the boards really quickly. I then switched to an orbital sander and started with 100 grit and then worked my way up to 220 grit. With the slope piece nicely sanded, I was ready to glue on the side boards that will trap the juice in place. Now here's where I was really careful with the glue because I don't want to spend a lot of time sanding along an inside corner. I want to make sure the boards were aligned vertically, so I used some coal boards and some additional clamp to clamp them all level. After letting the glue cure for another three to four hours, I removed the clamps and used my circular saw guided by my Craig portable cross cut to trim the edges of the cutting board nice and flush. I recently got the new Ryobi thickness planer. It's a really affordable machine, especially when it comes to thickness planers. And I thought hard maple would be a great way to test it out. So I planed down the backside of the board and it worked fantastic. I then did a little finish sanding and eased over all the edges. And that's just because hard maple can be a bit sharp. Even though I was careful with the glue, I did have to spend about 10 minutes sanding along these inside edges. This technique worked well, but I thought there might be an easier way to do it with a little bit more brute force. So I made a second board out of maple, and this time I just freehand trace the shape of the recess. I then used a 40 grit flap disc on my angle grinder and carved out the entire recess in about 15 minutes. Freehand power carving is fun, but it's hard to know if you're establishing the right angle for drainage. So periodically I would just pour a little bit of water to check to see how I was doing. An angle grinder is a super aggressive way to sand something. So I did have to spend about 30 to 45 minutes with the orbital sander smoothing everything out. I used microfiber rags to carefully remove all of the wood dust and then I sealed the boards with mineral oil. This is a food grade finish, and I just poured on a really heavy coat, spread it around with a rag, and let it sit overnight. The next morning, I took a clean rag and removed the excess, and then repeated the process all over again. 
All right, let's test this out. So we fired up the Traeger grill, which is my favorite way to cook meat, and cook this tri-tip to medium rare. We keep the seasoning real simple, just salt and pepper, but all of the juice collected quite nicely into the reservoir, and then we just added in a little bit of pepper sauce to give it some kick. Both cutting boards worked really well, but I like the organic aesthetic of the one that I power carved with the angle grinder a little bit better. It's also really good for eating family style. Now, our group at Maker Ranch is really fond of communal dining like Hot Pot or Korean barbecue, and this is sort of the grilled version of that, where we just fill up our bowls with rice and vegetables, and then everyone just sort of picks from this communal board. Now I know I'm going to get some comments about people worrying about salmonella and things like that, but I talked to a couple chefs and they said it's particularly for beef, using wood cutting boards is not a big deal. If we were somehow using this for raw chicken, that could be a little bit more of an issue, and I don't think I'd use this for fish. Now one change that I might add to future cutting boards is to create a little channel that makes it just a little easier to pour the drippings into some sort of storage container. But as it was, this wasn't too hard. I also think it'd be cool to do a version where we use a thinner wood board that's raised up so that all the juice collects into some sort of ceramic bowl. Anyways, I love this idea of being a little more intentional and integrating making into a typical communal dinner experience. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks!